So if we were to follow our process for example number one, it says negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than 22. Please note on our process, the first thing we have to do is isolate the absolute value. These are not parentheses. We cannot distribute. We have to undo what's happening to the absolute value sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. When doing that, though, whenever we have an inequality and I'm multiplying and dividing by a negative number, I have to make sure I flip the sign. So therefore, I now have absolute value of x plus 4 is now greater than negative 11. Does everybody see what I did? It's really important for you guys on your homework, especially those of you that forgot to isolate the absolute value. Now, this is a greater than symbol. I also wrote down in your process, it's an or inequality whenever you have a greater than or greater than or equal to. So when I create my two cases, I am going to create an or inequality. So my two cases is going to be just like we did for um, solving absolute value equations. You create one just without the absolute value, because now the absolute value is isolated, right? So I can create my two cases. Then my other case, again, I have to negate the um, quantity, right? So again, since you're negating a side, I have to flip the sign again. Okay. So whenever you make that, whenever you negate, remember solving the equations, we did one was the positive and one was the negate, or one was one, and then the other side was negated. Since I'm negating it, it's like multiplying by negative one. So I have to flip the sign, and then I also have to make sure I write in my conjunction because if you don't write it in, you'll forget. Whenever it's a greater than or greater than or equal to, it creates an or con conjunction. So now I just subtract 4. Subtract 4. x is greater than a negative 15. Subtract 4. Subtract 4. x is less than 7. So now I just go ahead and graph my solution. Um, I'm going to go by 5s so I can include everything. And again, guys, you can go by 1s, you can go by 2s, you can go by 3s, as long as you are consistent. All right. So then I just plot x is greater than negative 15. It's going to be a nice open circle here. Um, since that's x is greater than negative 15, was that the solution set that I had? Oh, hold on a second. I think I messed up on this problem. Uh, this is negative 2. Shoot, which problem is this? 59. OK. So this is negative 15, which is going to be all the values this way. <coughs> and then x is greater than, x is less than 7 is going to be an open circle this way, which is going to be all the values that way. Now remember, when we're dealing with an or, it could be one or the other, right? It's not the intersection. We know that they intersect in between these two values, but we're looking for one inequality to be true or the other. So if you guys see, one graph goes infinitely to the left, the other graph goes infinitely to the right. All it has to be true is for one, only for it to be a solution, it only has to be true for one of them. Well, all of your solutions go infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. So this example is all real solutions. Because our graphs actually cover the whole number line. Does everybody see that? Right? Usually, a lot of times, or go in opposite directions. But in this case, they actually went towards each other. But since it's an or, we're not looking for the intersection. We're just looking for one, um, one or the other, or both. Because remember what I